Hi, everybody. If I asked you, what is the most transformative technology in human history, what would you say? The internet? The smartphone? Artificial intelligence? Or refrigeration? Clearly, the vaccine has been transformative in our era of this global pandemic. Lee Kuan Yew famously cited air conditioning as a seminal technology in the development of Singapore because it allowed people to work in tropical climates, be more productive, and indeed none of us would be living and working the way that we do in tropical cities without modern air conditioning. When we do this exercise in our online course and the session on the role of technology in society, we get some peculiar responses. Uh, it makes for a lively debate. Uh, in addition to digital technologies, uh, internet, etc., you know, I often hear things like facial recognition or now the metaverse, um, you know, crypto, NFT, etc. And I think it suggests that we have a somewhat distorted understanding of the role of technology. In fact, I saw an online session coming up recently applying NFTs to promoting greater adoption of ESG principles in companies. So this, uh, to me, is very distorted. The pandemic over the last two years has clearly integrated technology into our lives in so many new ways, both personally and professionally. 24-hour uh, connectivity means that the whole notion of work-life balance has kind of gone out the window. But I think it's it's been useful, clearly, because it's allowed us to remain productive through lockdowns. But I think it comes with trade-offs. And I think it's also distorted our perception um, of, of technology. Uh, technology, we must remember, uh, is a problem-solving tool. It's not a, a, it's a means to an end. It's not an end unto itself. It's also, we should challenge the notion that technology is simply a pathway to greater riches for the owners of technology. That's a very simplistic way of looking uh, at technology in the wider context of how we need to be using technology uh, in society. So if we agree that technology is a problem-solving tool, then therefore, what are the problems that we need to solve? Uh, currently, a lot of uh, highly valued uh, technology applications uh, focus on convenience, food delivery, uh, algorithms to streamline our online shopping uh, experiences. But those same algorithms and technologies could be applied to promoting, for example, uh, greater uh, uh, ecosystem health, you know, monitoring and managing our common goods like air, water, uh, forests, uh, the ocean, uh, and so on. I think many professionals have lost sight of the real problems that need to be solved. Around the world, some 800 million people still lack access to clean water and sanitation. We have long since had technologies that can uh, solve that problem. One in four uh, urban residents around the world live in informal settlements or slums uh, who lack access to services um, electricity, indoor plumbing, uh, rubbish collection, and even strong, sturdy, and safe housing. We have technologies for low-cost, uh, secure construction technologies, prefabricated uh, building uh, uh, methods, etc. From a food production point of view, in the agricultural sector, it is true that the majority of our food waste happens at the farm gate. Uh, and that in, in the overall supply uh, chain for food production, uh, it is because the uh, rather basic technologies for uh, drying, storage, packaging, and transport of food, um, uh, farmers don't have access to these. So the question is, you know, why have we been unable to deploy and scale up some of these truly transformative technologies. And I'm not talking about AI and digital, but technologies that transform uh, the quality of life uh, for societies all around the world. It's not for a lack of money. 
Indeed, the top five uh, biggest technology companies each have a market capitalization in excess of $1 trillion, the same amount of money that would be required to provide universal uh, clean water access to everyone in the world. We know that investment capital chases higher returns. It is not going to pursue social objectives on its own. So therefore, we need intervention through policymaking and smart incentives to develop and deploy these technologies. It can't be left uh, simply to the market. We need bold new ideas in economic models, policy frameworks, and you know there are massive opportunities in meeting uh, basic needs through some of these foundational technologies. The uh, untapped market for affordable housing globally is estimated to be about $17 trillion. But these are not easy opportunities to understand or access uh, by sitting in financial capitals uh, like Hong Kong and Singapore. So in the session on our online course, we go much deeper into these questions. We unpack the societal dynamics uh, around how technology is deployed and used, um, how business leaders and leaders of other large organizations can capture new opportunities. So if this discussion has um, uh, piqued your interest, uh, do join us. The next intake of the course, the Leadership Reset, starts on the 16th of March and involves a live two-hour facilitated session each Wednesday afternoon Hong Kong time. Thank you. Thank you.